Good morning, Hugo. How you doing, man? Good morning, Matthew. How are you? I am good. I look forward to this every week now. This is like a little feature of my week, which is our chats. I would like to think that it's a feature of many people's lives. Uh, people mm. map their weeks around us, I would say. Yeah, that's a scary thought, isn't it? Can you imagine, can you imagine if that was the case? Oh, yeah, I don't think it is the case. But if anybody yeah, does, right. let us know in the comments. Do you map your week around a Wednesday? The Wednesday News yeah. Show podcast. They should type do. Thing. Yeah, pod, pod, podcast. Pod, 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 podcast. Um, <laughs> so uh, we set ourselves a challenge last week and people seemed to sort of like it. We did the Iger thing. We did the old man ahoy. Yeah. People got into it. Yeah, yeah. And then, but we thought we'd do another one. But this week we thought we'd change up a bit. It, it might not work. It might work. It might not work. We might have to go back to planning out cool trips again, which I wouldn't mind doing. <laughs> but... We mm -hmm. thought we'd do something a little bit different. Matt came up with an ingenious idea. All the ingenious yeah. ideas are of Matt, all the genius ideas are mine. So you have the ingenious mm. ones and I have the genius ones. The question right. is, it's a subtle difference. what but... is the difference? Yeah, mine, mine are just more in. Like infamous and, fam and famous. Infamous and yeah. famous. What's the difference, the difference between those just... two? Um, I'm infamous uh, and you're famous. Right. Okay, uh, uh, so the, what I thought of is we're journalists, right? We should do a bit of research. Um, so uh, something that I would love to find out more about, right, but I have never bothered to actually find out about is the death zone. Okay, dun, dun, so, dun. so the death, exactly, it's, it's like the most terrifying phrase in climbing, right, the death zone. Um, I, I know a little bit about it, obviously it's, it's, a, it's a height thing, once you get above a certain height on a mountain you're considered to be in the death zone, yeah. uh, and it's a bad place to be, hence the death bit, um, but I don't really know enough about it, I don't really know the height of it, I don't know what it does, I, I just don't know enough about the death zone, it's just one of those things that I know of. It you surprises know. me though, because you're, you're like, you've been to the Himalayas, you've done all that stuff, and yet you don't know what the death zone is? I, well, I, I know what it is, I just don't know specifics, and one day I would love to be in that death zone, which is a weird thing to say, and I just want to be prepared for the death zone, you know, I want to be ready. Do you want to know you exactly what happens to the body? when it goes in the, in the death zone. Is that what you're saying? Do you want to know like uh, actual? Yeah. Yeah, you want like, to know? Yeah, gory, gory, gory medical details. Yes, please, gory yeah. Gory medical details. All right, so that's my challenge. I've got to find out what the death zone is. Uh, mm, yeah. Do, do you think there's like death zone, which we're talking about the mountains here, right? Call Kenny Loggins, because you're in the danger zone. <sighs> yes, yeah, so we're talking like like high altitude death zone. So, you know, you can't get no, the like, death not zone. Not like on trad climbing death zones. Like, what, no, that's it, different. That's Indian that, face. That's actually called the, um, the, the exact terminology for that is called the <laughs> zone. Yeah. Uh, it's different. It's different. Is, do, do you reckon there is a death zone? On, is it the Indian, Indian face? Am I thinking about that route? The one in Wales? Yeah, the second you step off the ground, you're in the death zone. <laughs> you're basically in the um, death just zone. Just straight away, just death zone. And <laughs> just point, wake up uh, in the morning. An appointment with death as well. I think that's definitely a, a death zone. Just one. full death zone. Yeah. Yeah, full, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm talking mountaineering death zone, please. Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, my challenge for you and uh, is I want I I mean you you may know by now, but I am a vegan. I'm actually also mm. a very bad vegan these days. <laughs> with the uh, with the lockdown, my veganism has not been going so well considering i have kids that are not vegans anyway mm -hmm. whatever normally i'm a vegan uh and i would eat, like if you eat your child if they're a vegan does that is that vegan yeah but my child isn't a vegan so oh so it's, you can't even eat the child can't even eat the child yeah ah oh, damn man Tricky. but then cows are vegans and you eat cows does that make you a vegan i just don't know it's a minefield uh <laughs> anyway anyway speaking about cows um i want to know what are the best vegan climbing shoes on the market? And if you can chuck in, not even the best, but just like a good selection of, if I'm, if I'm a vegan and I'm looking for climbing shoes, where should I look? Mm -hmm. um, and the other one I want to look at okay. is, is there any kind of like technical wear that is vegan? And what are the materials, what are the technical materials that are vegan? Okay, all right, I will, I will, I will do that, I will find out. Where can a vegan do some happy shopping uh, on a climbing level. Okay, all right, I'm down with that, I'm down with that. Guilt-free guilt shopping, guilt-free shopping. There's no such thing. It's like, you know, you just put it in a basket, click on it, look at your credit card, it's all guilt. Full Ple guilt. Pleasure pain. Where's the pleasure? Mm. Yeah. Um, 
Talking about shopping, though, just before we go off for our little mini break, we should talk about Black Diamond at the beginning of the show because yes. uh, we're doing a three-day flash sale. So if you're watching this on a Wednesday... It's not called a flash uh, sale, Matt. It, it's not a flash sale. not called a flash sale. Sorry, it's called a what? A bargain bonanza, bonanza. discount. Bonanza. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, what, it's 10% off... Um, we're doing basically 10% off, like, not 10% off even, it's like three days of different discounts, special prices. Uh, mm. So for at the moment... You have until midnight tonight. So depending on what time you're watching this, on the 22nd of April at midnight, the BD10 discount offer ends. So you get 10% off of all BD gear uh, until the end Oof. of today, midnight. So yeah. go over to the Epic TV shop, uh, click BD, uh, BD10 is the discount code at checkout and you're, 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 you're winning, basically. Boom, there you go. All right, uh, an hour research time? Big time. All right, mate. See you in a bit. Bye. Many tic tacs later. Cool. Welcome back. How was your research time? How was my research time? Mm. My research time was great. <laughs> do you feel a bit? I feel a bit like a sort of a, a kid who's got a school project. Whenever we do this, like I feel like I want to get like sticky crayons out and not sticky, sticky notes, crayons. You know, just just make a collage, a, a, a poster of my research, perhaps. Yeah, like a kind of presentation that you can just be like this. Mm, exactly, yeah. Like you know, when you do lots notes. of colouring in and you get good marks for the colouring in somehow, even though you're an A-level standard, you know, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, did you do art for A-level, Matt? It was, I went to an easy school, they just let me colour in, it was really weird. Um, maybe it was just me. Uh, there is some news though, we have got some actual climbing news. Um, That's true. Yeah, and, and I think kicking off with uh, some very sad news, which is the death of Joe Brown. Uh, he died at 89 years old. And if you don't know who Joe Brown is, he, he is absolute legend of the climbing world. He's put up a ton of first ascents uh, on sort of uh, British rock climbing, but also like 8,000 meter Himalayan peaks. He was out there uh, mountaineering right at the beginning of that whole sort of mountaineering revolution that happened. Um, a couple of things that like when I was when I was looking into his life that I didn't realize he'd done is one is uh, Cenotaph Corner which is in uh, North Wales and it's this open book of a crag and it's the line and he put up that first ascent and I have done it and I nearly fell off it it's only he won but I nearly fell off it and I was just like <clears throat> blown away by the fact he actually did that way back in the day incredible uh, he also climbed Katjungunga th the world's high third highest mountain with George Band just He's a legend, and he will be hugely missed within the climbing community. He kind of, he was, uh, he was, was he like a Sir Chris Bonington kind of days? It, it, Those guys exactly. climbed together? Yeah, they did climb together. Um, and there's a brilliant video that we've just put on the Epic TV website on the handpick section, uh, which is Joe Brown and Don Willems' last climb together. And it is just wonderful as a climbing movie. It's got like Don Williams turning up like smoking a fag on his Vespa. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Please go and watch that. Link down below, all the rest. Uh, but yeah, check it out. I always like looking back at those kind of days because um, it, it's just amazing to think that some of the stuff that they climbed in the equipment that they climbed it in as well. So like back when he probably first started climbing, they weren't climbing in like climbing shoes. It was just all those kind of big like walking type mm. boots. Uh, yeah. And then and then the equipment they were getting to the top of like 8,000 in the, in the Himalayas was just unbelievable, ah. incredible. Yeah, next level, next level. Really cool. Um, okay, so my news is uh, Mr. Perman Bertel. They're still climbing in the Frankenjura. You were talking about that last week, weren't you? Mm, how you I fr was, yeah. How friends of yours in the Frankenjura. He's done a climb called Pantera. Um, Perman Bertel is kind of, he's been around for a while now and he's kind of surrounded in a bit of controversy normally. Um, a lot to do with the fact that he does a lot of his own first ascents. He kind of, uh, he works routes for a long for a long time there was one particular uh time in 2015 where he his um route was called mayoese and it was a first ascent and he graded it 9b and then two weeks later adam andre came along and yeah. downgraded it to 9a plus um because he said he found like a knee bar and perman who's a lot smaller than adam basically wrote a whole blog post about how he disagreed pretty much mm -hmm. um and then there was a bit of a controversy there, and there's been other controversy around his other kind of first ascents, people saying they're a bit soft, but uh, he's still an incredibly strong climber and a very impressive one. And this 9A obviously just carries on, carries on proving that. But I am a, I'm a big fan. We did an interview with him one time. I can't remember if it was you or was it with, with Charlie. Um, I think it was me, no, I've never met him. 
uh, and he's a very nice guy. He's got a couple of kids. Um, his wife's a doctor. That was the other thing. He, um, you can still climb in the Frank in Europe, but this route was like an hour away from his, uh, his house. He was very responsible. He warmed up at his house and his wife is a doctor. She was a bee layer uh, and they were only out for an hour. So he kind of fitted it in with the regulations of Germany uh, COVID <laughs> situation. Nice. So go on, Perman, nice one. If you climb 9A during lockdown, did you even climb 9A? That's the question. Or if you climb 9A in lockdown, does it become a 9B? Oh, very good question. We'll leave that to the general public. Yeah. Uh, cool. That's all the news I've got, really. It's, it's a bit quiet at the moment for some reason. Don't know why. Um, but yeah, that's about it. There's a lot of cool... Uh, there is a lot of cool media out and about at the moment as well. Lots mm. of people like doing YouTube channels, lots of video, like videos coming out, obviously stuff that was shot before the uh, the lockdown. Um, we're trying to put lots of out as, 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 as much out as possible as well. So we'll talk about that later on as well. But um, yeah. is there one thing that you've seen in the last week that's really like got you excited? For social media? Um, no, just like, like films, videos, uh, any any like just, just off the top of your head. I know we didn't research this, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> is there anything that like you got excited about that i really liked um i like seeing anthony goldstein's 8c uh 80 plus sorry silver linings that we put up the other day that was cool to see that because it felt like normal you know it's just like him being him being badass like i quite like the vibes of that one um so that's been my favorite video of this week i think is okay. that one mine is uh the, the latest rid of vertical which is like the part two of the training with mika Mawem. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't seen the first one, you should go and watch the first one. It's awesome. There's English subtitles, so for people that can't speak French, don't worry about it. But the second Ooh. episode just came out this week. It's very good. Awesome. Uh, right, so we did some research. We had two things to research. I've done vegan climbing shoes. Uh, you've done the death zone, which yes. just sounds awesome. Who, who do you want to go first? Do you want to rock, paper, scissors this? Yes, I can't see okay, you. Right. You can't see me. Okay, this is also isn't going to work for our podcast audience. So as we as we go, okay, it's one, two, three, go. And then we and say you have it. to say it. Okay, okay. ready? Ready? What? One, ready? Go. One, one two, two, three. three. Paper. Paper. What? <laughs> Fuck you. I literally, okay, uh, I held up scissors and said paper because you said paper. Ah, oh, dude, this is harder than I thought. All right, one more time, one more time. One, one two, two, three. three paper. Rock. You win, you win. Yes. That was uh, what does that mean? I get to go first. You get to go first. Tell me about the death zone, Hugo. Okay, I can tell you about the death zone. Right, so the death zone in mountaineering refers to altitudes above a certain point where the oxygen is insufficient to sustain human life. Um, so the point generally is tagged at 8,000 meters. Mm -hmm. So kind of 8,000 uh, mountains and above, which is 26,000 feet. Um, and at 8,000 meters, there is less than 356 millibars of atmospheric pressure. Now to put that in perspective, at sea level where uh, the human body operates the best at its optimum, there is an atmospheric pressure of 1,013.25 millibars of atmospheric pressure which is a difference of 657.75, Matt. Yes, science! Whoa, you need a poster for this. This is poster territory. You follow me so far? Okay, so basically there's, there's, uh, there's less atmospheric pressure at uh, 8,000 meters than there is at sea level. Okay? Right, yeah, Which, which is you. kind of the other way around that I thought it would be, but that's, I think that's right. This is, this is me like reading stuff and trying to interpret it the way that I interpret it. I might have got some of this wrong, but that's the way I interpreted it. Okay, so an, an extended stay above 8,000 meters uh, will result in, in deterioration of bodily functions and can cause death. Uh, the, the lungs can't get enough oxygen and uh, they begin to shut down. Um, mm. So an extended stay, so anything above 16 to 20 uh, hours is counted as, a, as an extended stay. So you don't want to be above the death zone for more than 16 to 20 hours. I think a lot of deaths obviously happen when people get lost, uh, have an injury, get basically get stuck above that 8,000 meters. Um, so you don't want to be there too long. Okay. Um, okay, and right, so this is like what happens to the body when 
when you when you when you are about when you're in the death zone. Okay, so oxygen defici deficiency is called uh, hy hypoxia, uh, and with the onset of that, the uh, the pulse rate soars, the blood thickens and clots, and the risk of a stroke rises, and then worsening conditions can lead to high altitude pulmonary uh, edema, or otherwise known as happy. Happy? Mm -hmm. Not happy. <laughs> Not happy. Um, <laughs> when the lungs uh, uh, take on, uh, 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 take on f uh, fluid and victims can drown in their own fluid. I did not know that. Okay, I, I mean, like, I knew the words, but I didn't know you drowned in your own fluid. That is horrible. So that's okay. a, that's a, that's a result of happy, happy, hape. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> with the the heart rate um, with hypoxia can go up uh, to 140 beats per minute, which is called taxicardia, increasing the risk of a stroke or sudden cardiac arrest. So there's kind of two okay. ways you can go. You can go like drowning in your own fluid or cardiac arrest. From your increased uh, heart rate. Okay. Okay. You taking notes? Yeah. This is, this is feeling very serious so far. All right. Okay. Carry on. Uh, I don't really know how not to make it serious. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just scared. You're just putting me off. <laughs> okay. This is quite interesting, and this is like this kind of makes sense from a lot of the films that I've seen. At mm -hmm. at not at altitude, non-essential bodily functions are suppressed in order to like for the for the essential ones to kind of maintain their operation. So for example, the digestive system, digestive system is suppressed in favor, favor of the cardio pulmonary uh, system. So but therefore it's why like people really struggle to eat food because their digestive system's like, I'm not having any of this. I'm gonna shut down and let the other guys do the, do the hard work. Um, okay. So eating basically becomes nigh on impossible. Uh, or like you take on liquids or there's like, you, you hear about mountaineers kind of like, um, struggling yeah you see them like forcing down food because they have to but they don't want to that sort of thing exactly exactly okay um, okay and then okay last little bit last little tidbit uh, it's thought that um, the highest that humans can live at uh, and be, and sustain is 5,950 meters where uh, humans have lived like two years at a time 5,950 meters that's yeah that's like, high right that's higher than Mont Blanc, that's higher yep. than a lot of mountains. Like living up there the whole time. I've been up to 3,000. What's what's like Agui de Midi? What's the bivy up there just by the green? Uh, three, eight. Three, three, eight. 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 Uh, and I've many. stayed up there for like, I think I was out there for two nights or three nights. Mm -hmm. And sleep, I just, by the third night, I, I got maybe got like two or three hours sleep. Other than that, I couldn't sleep. It was the most exhausting shoot I've ever been on. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, that's kind of my research on, on the death zone. You got any questions? That's cool. Uh, no, you kind of answered them all, to be honest. I, and I guess, I guess having so, if you have supplemental oxygen at that level, I guess that sort of puts off the death zone effects a little bit. You know what I mean? So your body kind of copes because it's getting that oxygen that it isn't if you haven't been getting it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, right. So I get. So I guess when people go up, well, yeah, when people go up uh, and they do Everest these days, for the most part, they take up oxygen. I think it was was it fifty three. Tenzig and uh, no, it wasn't. Yes. Oh God! It was. I should know that. The first, the uh, the the first um, uh, ascent without oxygen was by um, Rhino Messner, 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 Messner and yeah. Peter Peter Habela in 1978. Sorry, I had to yeah. read that. Obviously, I wouldn't need oxygen just because I'm sort of an uber athlete, um, but I understand why people would. But the thing is, is like, would you? <sighs> Because like there is like this thing, there's this this thing at the moment that if you do it with oxygen, and I, and I I have no idea because I've never been, but there's this yep. there's this kind of perspective that if you do it with oxygen, you're not really doing it. Yeah. Okay. I, and I yeah. think that's that's crazy because like I I imagine like even with oxygen, it's a huge uh, like a huge thing to do. Like you like you know you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's still. Yeah, I think I think for me it comes down to ego. Like okay, so I've been to five seven i think and yeah. I, it was exhausting right it was exhausting couldn't you know like walking is hard work however the ego part of me says oh i wouldn't want to go up there unless i could do it without oxygen but because it's sort of like not within the realms of my financial ability it's sort of like it's just it's in the realms of ego right now so i have no idea and i don't really want to answer it because like yes ideally i'd love to go up if i was going to do it without oxygen the reality i have no idea um but yeah i think you're right about it being hard whatever you do so fair play to anyone kind of thing 
Would you, I've got a question. Would you, um, I, I, I often think about this about like Mont Blanc as well, but like, cause in, Mont, uh, in, in the Alps in Mont Blanc, people are like, mm -hmm. like Mont Blanc is like, you say you climb Mont Blanc because you want to say you climb Mont Blanc. It's not because it's like the best climbing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like yeah. the most yeah, aesthetic sure. line, whatever kind of thing. Would you, like Everest is obviously like another level when it comes to that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But if you're like, if somebody says, right, we've got a choice, you can do an 8,000, we can do, we, we can do one 8,000 meter. You can either do, uh, give me an example of another 8,000. Um, Cash and Junga. Cash and Junga. You can either do Cash and Junga when, and nobody will be there and it'll be like, nice, we can have this, this whole experience or you can do mm -hmm. Everest and it'll be, it'll be Everest. What would you do? Yeah. Uh, I would say Everest and and the reason behind that is that I was I would have always said the opposite until I saw the thing in real life and it is everyone's like oh it's ugly oh it's this it's freaking beautiful and it's an amazing and you just see it from miles around it's got this something about it like this presence and although I would hate to do it in a big guided group it, if someone gave me an opportunity to climb that mountain I would take it, it sort of I would try to do it as ethically as possible I'd want to I, I, there, there are ways you can do it, which isn't just being in a big group. I'd want to do it from the um, from the other side, from the Tibet side. Uh, I'd want to do it fairly unsupported if I was to do it. But yes, I would I would do it because I, I honestly think it's it's a beautiful mountain. Um, okay. I just want to do it in the right way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I mean, like yeah. me not knowing much about it and, and not having been there, so that's that's a different perspective. I would, for me, I'd always be like, I want to go and do the other mountain kind of thing. I don't really like if if somebody gave me the option and said, yep. you can do the two. But then I haven't been there, so I think that kind of, that must make a difference. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. This is a whole new, another podcast, this one. I think we're getting into something. Um, can I, well, I one, one, last, one last question before, before we yeah. stop. Um, how many 8,000ers are there in the world? 14. Very good, very good. Uh, and where are they? Oh, just everywhere. Just the, in well, places, not. countries. <laughs> they are no, they're, so they're, in two, two hey, areas. We guess the, guess the first one. Uh, Nepal, Nepal. Well, Nepal. no, like the, the mountain ranges. Oh, uh, well, the Everest region. Which is called? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Himalayas. <laughs> Himalayas, oh, I see. Okay, fine, yeah, fine. I mean, about the region within the Himalayas. So we get Himalayas. Yeah. We get the the, the, the mountains in Pakistan, uh, which is... Begins with the, K. The, 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 what's that range called, though? Well, I mean, like, so basically, it's the Himalayas and the Karakoram. Okay, cool. That's where all the four thousand, uh, the fourteen eight thousanders are in the world. Can you name one other uh, one, um, one more other than uh, Catch and Jigger, which you already have, to be fair? And, and uh, Lutz, Lutzi, Lutzi. Very good, very good. Lutzi, Lutzi, Nutzi, Flupzi, Dubzi. Lutzi, and then K two um, is also one. Um, what's the one that uh, Uli Steck did his day ascent of? Annapurna? Uh, Annapurna? Yes, Annapurna. Yes, Annapurna. Yeah. Well, that crazy solo. Yeah, Annapurna. Yeah, yeah. I shook his hand after that. I saw him in Kathmandu and shook his hand. It was my, like, most geeky moment ever. Wow. I was just loving life. That's very cool. That happened. Yeah. What did he say? Uh, hello, Matt. Sorry? Did he say yeah, hello? Yeah, he was just, he didn't know who I was because I was, I literally just wandered up to the bloke and I had, I'd never done any climbing daily anything. I was just like, Uli, can I shake your hand, please? <laughs> literally that. And he was, I remember it because he was wearing the crispest white t-shirt and I'd just arrived in Kathmandu during like this flood and mm. everyone was soaking wet and muddy apart from him. He was like a beacon standing out. It was, uh, it was a really strange, surreal moment. Uh, anyway, veganism, Hugo Pilcher, veganism. Uh, I've done some research for you. First yes. of all, why are you a vegan? For what reasons are you a vegan? Uh, I, they are political, political reasons. Okay. Uh, I want to try and reduce my carbon footprint, even though I have three children and they're, they're using up every <laughs> bit of carbon that I could possibly try and save. Nice. Okay. So kind of like ethical reasons behind yes. that. Yes. Okay. I, somebody actually asked me the other day, they were like, is it, eth is it, I think it's, I think mine's political, but then like ethical is like, you don't want to see animals get killed. Okay. So mine's political, as in I want to reduce like my effect on the world uh -huh. uh, by 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 doing it. Whereas whereas if it's ethical, you're like you don't like you don't want basic animals to be killed. Okay, that's that's good. I didn't so the political one I didn't actually know. So that's mm. that's cool. So look, being a vegan, obviously you know this. People might not know this. It's you're not allowed to use or eat animal products. Okay, and that includes stuff like cheese and eggs, which is always the one that blows my mind because I cannot imagine doing that. I don't know how you do it. You're a very brave man. Um, but obviously this kind of goes into into products as well because there are animal uh, products in products. 
the yeah. one that always catches me out is skincare in climbing, right? Because like I think climb on, you know, like beeswax is is from bees, which is an animal product. Therefore, you can't technically use it. So it kind of affects lots of products without you initially thinking. I think we think like don't eat meat. But the beeswax thing is something that I just don't don't think about. So you have to be mm -hmm. careful if you are a vegan and be looking into the climbing world. Yeah. Um, and leather in the climbing world, especially with climbing shoes, is used a lot. And it's mainly micro suede leather, which is the issue. So that okay. really fine, soft stuff. That's the problem. Now, you, you think like, oh, it's simple. We'll just replace leather with a synthetic product. The difficulties with this are sort of the, what you'd expect, which is uh, performance and cost. OK, so performance wise, the synthetic materials that will replace leather tends to be not as good and a lot heavier than the leather equivalent. OK, now there are ways around this uh, and there's a material that Scarpa use all the time called Alcantara. OK, I've never heard of it before, but okay. for example, that is 10 pounds per square inch, this material. OK, right. so it's really expensive. Wow. Um, but the, the biggest issue apparently for climbing shoe brands or has been is the glue that they use to stick everything together with because glue is, is often an animal uh, product and it's very difficult to find the correct stickiness of glue for a vegan based glue. That is okay. a big issue, more so than the synthetic thing. So it is being sorted out. But I, I think with anything, if you think about sort of a Tesla, for example, like or any electric car, it's sort of like you own an electric car and it feels like you have to tell people that you own an electric car because it's a bit of an oddity, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the same with climbing shoes. You have to, climbing brands are being like, that is our vegan shoe because it, it does cost quite a lot to do it. And it's sort of like, it's almost like a marketing point at the moment. I think sure. we'll reach this point where like, instead of having an electric car, just everyone will have a car. They just happen to be electric. And, and I think we'll reach a point where everyone's got a climbing shoe. It just happens to be vegan, but we're not there yet. You know, yeah. we're getting there, yeah. but it takes time. Um, so yeah, it, the issue is replacing it. And, and toe patches is the main sticking point here because the toe patch uses leather often. It requires a special sort of uh, properties that leather does. And it's again, expensive uh, and heavy to replace that. So a lot of shoes are like 90% vegan apart from that little toe patch section. Um, mm -hmm. okay. okay, so model wise, um, I've kind of picked out three vegan shoes that I think you should look at. Okay. Starting off with beginner or sort of gym climbing shoe, that's what I've called it. Uh, and it's so ill. So Soil so is okay. an American brand. There's sort of that gym hipster thing going on and pretty much all of their shoes are vegan. But if you're looking for the uh, sort of the beginner or gym model, check out the runner, you know, that bright green one. Yeah, that yeah sure, in the shop. sure. Yeah, so I mean, that's I've got, sort of- I've got, the, I've got the hipster beard, so that could work quite well. There you go. Oh, that's trimmed, I've noticed. You've trimmed it this week. I've trimmed it, yeah. I was getting a bit of grief and people were saying that I looked like I'd found gin and tonic during the uh, during, during the lockdown. Yeah, which is, little uh, do they know it's just straight whiskey, yeah. but they'll find out. Um, <laughs> exactly. so, uh, so that's the beginner shoe. If you can just step it up a bit, and I didn't know this, yeah. the Anastasi Pro. Do you remember that shoe that I don't think is a bouldering shoe, but sort of done as a bouldering ah, shoe? Okay, I've got that. Yeah, vegan. Yes. I didn't realize it was vegan. That's well, I'm going to say this. this. This is what websites have told me, okay? So I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, but this is what websites and Google has told me, is that that 510 Anastasi Pro and a lot of 510 shoes are vegan as well, but that Pro kind of caught my eye because it's a shoe that I really enjoyed and I didn't know was vegan. You know, I feel like it's a bit like eating a sort of like tofu bolognese that I didn't know was a tofu bolognese. It feels like that. Yeah, because tofu can sometimes be quite good. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, by accident, yeah. And then you're like, you feel you feel good about yourself and you feel like non-guilty because you've eaten something. That's what I feel about the Anastasi Pro. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then, this is so weird. And then finally, if you yeah. want to step it up, Tanaya Mastia. You know that new blue Tanaya shoe? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Vegan, vegan. Didn't know that. Uh, and it's high performance. Um, so yeah, there are definite options for everyone. There's a lot of vegan shoes on the market. You have to be careful with exactly which one, but there's weird stuff like, for example, La Sportiva, from my, from my research, only have one full vegan shoe, only one in the range, and it's called an Oxygen. 
Ah, uh, it's like the one with the coloured uh, soles. Uh, yeah, it's the one with the coloured soles. Um, so that's the only one. So some brands are embracing it, some brands are taking it a bit longer. Um, so do your research a little bit. There are loads of websites out there saying the top 30 vegan shoes, all of that stuff. The ones I picked were just a few. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to say about this, because I was meant to do clothes as well. Yeah. Uh, I sort of didn't do clothes that much. <laughs> basically but the only interesting i don't i don't find clothes that interesting but the best thing i find is that uh you can make recycled leather out of pineapple leaves which okay. blew my mind so usually when you have a pineapple people lob away the leaves but you can take those leaves recycle them and make a breathable sort of uh, a clothes alternate yeah leather jacket out of a pineapple leather how cool is that so next time i go alpine climbing i should probably be wearing a uh, reused alpine uh, leather jacket. If you want, you might get a bit cold. <laughs> or hot. <laughs> yeah, or hot. <laughs> so that's it. That's my vegan research done. Very there good. Go. How do you feel now? Do you want to be a vegan? I just want to eat a steak. But, um, you want to eat a steak? Just, just don't know why. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> I, you'd think that after all those years, I would have uh, rubbed off on you somehow. <laughs> or that vegan shoes that I was wearing, apparently, right. would have rubbed off right. on you. But and saying that, you've got your favourite pair is the 510 Anastasia Pro, so... I'm sorry, I'm just still disturbed about the rubbing off thing, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'm back in the room now, back there. <laughs> just... That's absolutely fine. I was thinking more of like the, uh, the, the slabby rubbing off, but whatever. I, I think we should, yeah, whatever fine. Whatever yeah. Some real images in my head right now. Uh, <laughs> media, media on the Epic TV website, what have we got? Uh, media on the Epic TV website, we have got a episode with Spanish climber Daila Ojeda who um, we basically there's a there's a series on at the moment called On the Road uh, it's a series basically where two filmmakers just go around Europe filming with some of Europe's best climbers uh, and in this episode we are with Daila Ojeda and she's route setting in Treviso in Italy <laughs> Mi nombre es Daila Ojeda y me dedico profesionalmente a la escalada. Estamos aquí hoy en, el, en la sala de, de escalada Le Bloc, en Treviso. En mi caso estoy ayudando a equipar para el boulder del premio, que es un boulder, el boulder más duro de la, de la fiesta. Y estoy equipando el, el, el problema para las chicas. Y bueno, es un poco de más técnico, un poco también de fuerza de dedos. Bueno, yo creo que también cuando pruebas vías difíciles e intentas superar tus límites, tampoco es tan divertido. Eso siempre era lo más importante para mí en la escalada. Y en el, la parte deportiva, seguro como conocerme más a mí misma y superar mis límites. Y creo que es un deporte que te enseña mucho sobre uno mismo. That's Dilo Jeda. She's uh, route setting in Treviso. Uh, she is. Uh, she's a very good climber. She did the first ascent of mind control. My, no, the first woman's ascent of mind control and fisheye. Not that we care about that stuff, but I think it's quite impressive still. Yeah, very impressive. Um, cool. I, I, I wanted to flag up a sort of hand picked from the web stuff because on the Epic TV website, if you scroll down a bit, there's a section which is called hand picked from the web. And we put the best, funnest, you know, goodest, that's a word, uh, film, climbing films that we can find on that section. So, for example, there's that Joe Brown film that I talked about at the beginning of the week. There's the Anthony Gould, sorry, the show. There's the Anthony Goldstein film. So if you're sort of bored on lockdown and you want to find a place where we pull everything together, like the best of the best, go to the handpick section, scroll down, have a little look at that. So it's sort of like a general media notes. It's just a, a good hub for climbers if you want to go there. And like, leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the films. Yeah, true. Just can so they I'm... do that? On... Oh, they can do that, they can, can't they? They can yeah. do that. They can. You're right. Uh, that's good. Uh, so that's media yeah. taken care of. Anything else? We've got, there's a, cold, there's a cold house media. There's more cold house media vlogs up. Uh, mm -hmm. This time, it's actually quite an interesting one. It's them like climbing around the world. Uh, in gyms, different gyms, but I'm not going to show you a teaser, but go and watch it. It's good. If you like Josh and Charlotte, you'll like this one. They've got a new dog as well. It's so cute. Oh. Um, final, final thing I want to say is we've only got 4,000 people to go before we're at 200,000 uh, Climbing Daily subscribers. So please hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't already. Get us to that 200,000. It'd be awesome. Also, you know who hit 1,000 followers on, uh, on YouTube? You? No, Epic TV España. Ooh, okay. We have a Spanish channel. If you uh, haven't yet subscribed and you're a Spanish speaker, go subscribe. It's growing at a phenomenal rate. 
Go Spain. Yeah, congratulations, Spain. <laughs> well done, Spain. Well you're done, done Spain. Well, Spain. You're, you're doing nice. okay. No, they're doing very yeah. good because they're, they're all in lockdown. They've been in lockdown as, as long as anyone. And they're still... Mm. They did a really cool interview uh, with Chris Sharma the other day. And they spoke to him on Zoom, which apparently is the place where everybody speaks these days. Zoom. I'd never, I'd never heard of it until lockdown, and then all of a sudden, it's now one of the biggest companies in the world. How's yeah, that work? I had to download it the other day. I felt like a sort of like it's a bit like TikTok. I don't really know what I'm doing. It's just it's a thing I think I should have, you know. Let us know if anybody is on TikTok that watches this. Also, let us know if anybody would like to see Matt doing dances on TikTok. <laughs> I yeah. personally would. Right. I'll get on it. Yeah, I just TikTok. did a little one. You didn't see it, but I did one. Uh, I did see it. I saw it. Front of my eye. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> cool. Uh, Is can that I just it? say, yeah, one more quick thing. Just, uh, just a quick reminder about this uh, bargain basement bonanza thing, whatever. Mm. Uh, BD Black Diamond gear, ten percent off, only until tonight. So you've only got till midnight tonight to get it. So go get it. Uh, we've also got comments of the week, so don't forget that, Matt. Don't try and get oh. away with it. I've got one. I'm go just. Ahead. I feel. For, I feel for Flo, the editor. All right, but um, it, it is. Uh, so it's probably might be the one you've got, but it's about from Matthew Marcroft, uh, and it's saying, "Fellas, you've just signed yourself up for a North Face of the Iger or Old Man of Hoy specials. We'd love to see that films." So a lot of people are saying that we should do our next challenge should be the research challenge that we set ourselves the other day. I which I completely can agree. Can we do? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. That's amazing, then, because that is. Sub- Big budget trip, so we're going to go to the Old Man Ahoy and we're going to go do the North Face of the Iger. As in, like, separate, you do the Old Man Ahoy, I do the North Face of the Iger. Mate, it's going to be massive. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll maybe do it. Um... No, but we've done it. <laughs> done it. I've already put the flights. We're, we're in. Okay, my one is from Pierre Z. Uh, we didn't answer him in the question, so I thought I'd answer him in the show. Uh, as English, I'm actually Scottish, but how do you like living in France? Asking the French living in England. Uh, as an Englishman right now, how do you like living in France, Matt? Uh, everyone else is coming out of lockdown and I'm still in my house. But apart from that... Who's coming out of lockdown? Oh, God, my Austrian friend was like, I've been windsurfing, climbing. It's just... It, uh, <clears throat> France is very locked down. So currently, although I appreciate France, it's a bit depressing. But I, I like living in France. I like the cheese. I when, like the people. When we come out... That's true, yes. When we come out of um, mm. a lockdown, are you going to get yourself a bigger place? Um, yeah, maybe. I, I rearranged all my photos on the wall the other day. That's how much I've, long I've been staring at them. I had to stare at something different. So uh, they've all changed. I think you should get a bigger place, Matt. Okay, I'll get a bigger place. Uh, my, uh, yeah, for me, as a, as a Scotchman living in, in France, I, I feel a lot more at home than, than English people. Can I say that? Mm-hmm. Entente en cordiale and all that. On vivant bouillabaisse, cul de sac, laissez faire chicken cordon bleu. Uh, I actually said that to a French person the other day. Uh, they were like, where are you from? I was like, I'm, Scot- I'm Scottish, although you wouldn't probably think it. Um, and I was like, yeah, do you know the Entente Cordiale? And they just looked at me as if I was like, I had no <laughs> idea what I was talking about. I was like, ah, oh, it must be a Scottish thing. Doesn't it make you proud to be Scottish? It's being Scottish! Anyway, I, I like it, I love it. It's great for where we live is amazing. We live in the mountains, so there's not mm. much to complain about. So. Yeah, it's pretty good. Eh? It's it's super good. It's super good. Also, I just want to let people know that I didn't eat in this show. People didn't like the eating. So whenever no. we, whenever we do a podcast in the future, Matt, we're not allowed to eat. All right? Don't okay. Eat. I drank coffee at the beginning. I Sorry. think I think liquids are okay. I okay. think they were just uh, people didn't like my orange eating. <laughs> And I was trying to learn. stay healthy and do podcasts at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's, it's the tricky balancing act. I haven't eaten yet. I've had one yogurt. I'm about to have lunch. <laughs> All right, okay. Just to on, let you know. On that note, on that note. <laughs> All right, mate. Have uh, a good one. BD10. 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 And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.